Hi, this is Steve Farnsworth with the Steveology Group, and today I am talking with Patrick Stitkin. He is the a brand, an agency brand strategist and author of Brand Aid with co-author Larry Lenny. Welcome, Patrick. Hey, hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, man. I've uh, I was honored to actually meet uh, Patrick uh, a while ago through social, and uh, had a chance to even write a little blurb for uh, Brand Aid. And uh, which is my pleasure, and so it's great to have you here. So let's, you know, I really want to talk about, you know, one of the things that executives don't do very well, in my experience, is is build a, uh, uh, if they do it at all, they don't build a strong social presence. And and the part about this is like, there's a lot of reasons that they give for not doing this. Uh, time is often it, or they don't want to take the, the spotlight away from their company. But the reality is today is whenever we do business with somebody, if we're doing a partnership, uh, selling or buying a product going to hire somebody we do we search for for people involved the people we're doing business with we want to know who they're what they're about and in in, in incomplete information makes it look like you don't know what you're doing that you're a neo luddite perhaps you're a little out of out of sync so let's talk about how executives can build up their social uh, personal brand um, just to kind of get you know probably a good pl starting place is like what are the questions executives should ask themselves to get a, a good basic snapshot of their social and digital brand. Sure. Well, I, I think you hit on it pretty well, Steve. You know, there, there's a lot of different reasons and excuses on why people do or don't uh, manage their brand online. And so, you know, a first question, if you're trying to get just a good snapshot of, of the current situation um, of your online brand is, you know, ask Google. So go out and, uh, and do a search on your name and look at page one, maybe even page two, results and just look for what returns, you know, what articles, what social media profiles, what images, what videos, um, what are the search results that, that get returned and, you know, is it positive, is it negative, is it going to hurt whatever you're trying to get accomplished. Um, with, with your brand, you know, yes, it's great to know what's happening online, but I think before you even do that snapshot, um, you need to really just start the foundation of, you know, what we term as your personal brand, which is what people think of you. And so, you know, really getting an understanding of what are your brand items, what do you want people to think about you in different situations, um, what value can you provide, and, you know, really what is it that you stand for? So, you know, taking, taking a snapshot of that and then saying, okay, now when it comes to social media and, and digital, um, anything online, does that brand get communicated through your current social media? Um, and making sure it's consistent, you know, not only consistent both with offline and online, um, but looking at it across all the digital platforms, so all the social media, like a Twitter account, LinkedIn profile, are you on Facebook, um, looking at all that and saying, is the message consistent and, you know, am I really communicating the same thing across every single place that, that I am? I, and, I, and I'm curious what your thoughts are, like one of the things I suggest, um, well, it's not something I do uh, necessarily professionally a lot of times because of some of the work I do with content marketing clients uh, mm -hmm. I, I need to have executives go through this process and so when they go through this kind of asking those questions I ask that they, they write down some place their thoughts not capture everything they come across but kind of uh, write down their their kind of their key thoughts takeaways is there anything that you you like to have people kind of like keep a record of or things that they see or special things they might want to like keep, to keep notes on um, you know as far as notes I think People tend to see branding as um, sometimes kind of this this way to protect yourself, and they don't see it as a very you know big positive way to really you know truly tell people you know how great you really are you know because I'm sure you know you know it and your clients know it and employees, but um, it really can be a very positive thing that can have a great impact. Um, so things I would take into account are, are you know both sides. So as you're looking at your current brand, um, both online and offline, you know, take an asset inventory, so to speak, um, just writing those things down like you were saying, saying, okay, are these positive, are they negative, and how do we either build up and replicate what we're doing very well, or how do we, you know, delete or minimize the things that we're not? One of the challenges that I've had, or I've had to deal with pretty extensively in, in this area is that people go, and this is true also on the corporate level, People will go out and look at how other uh, companies or other executives present themselves, and then they'll mimic that. And I think that's a great danger because most people do a really crap job of what they're doing, and they just kind of they're just mimicking others. And so I, I always have to the way I kind of 
uh, address it as like, are you just me too? You know, me too also, or do you have a unique proposition? And and that's that's a harder idea to get across. How how could you tell people when they're looking through different profiles to get ideas about how they might want to present themselves? How do you? Is there some advice or guidance you can give them to kind of like to, to notice those certain things and just go, oh, that's just regular marketing crap, corporate speak. It, yeah, it, it, it really is a, a hard thing to teach people um, because you're right, you know, th there's so many profiles out there on every social media network and, you know, even with traditional media. And so to try to mimic and, and emulate what other people are doing, um, it can be very dangerous. You know, if someone's just dipping their toe in the water, we don't want them trying to emulate Steve Farnsworth and out there producing as much content as you are because, you know, their team's going to look at that and clients are going to look at that and say, you know, what are they doing? You know, all of a sudden they're, they're not doing their job. Um, and so, you know, we tell people to, to really take it a step at a time and, and take baby steps. Um, you know, look at the, the, the activity level and the interaction that you have and just ask yourself, does that support what you're trying to get accomplished? You know, we, we don't all have the ability to truly you know, do what you do on a regular basis um, or, you know, other top influencers. Um, and that's okay. You know, not everyone is built to do that. So I think, you know, really picking and choosing what you want to get accomplished and doing it in a way that appeals to your audience, that, that's what we try to help people with. So kind of going the next step on kind of doing that self-audit, um, self-personal brand audit, what are some of the tools and research uh, that executives can use to help flesh and to flesh out kind of the data insights for their personal brand? Yeah, so we um, we did a pretty deep dive of this, um, as you saw in Brand Aid, and so we actually have an audit um, in the book that you know walks you through and allows you to score yourself. Um, but you know, with the self audit, there there are certainly things that you can do at a very um, I won't say low level, but very easy to to get in, and there's a, a lot of free tools. Um, certainly you know, doing that vanity search and, you know, just searching your name to see, okay, what is the current situation? If a prospect or, you know, a client or a potential partner is looking for me, what are they going to find? Um, then there's other analytic tools, certainly Google Analytics, uh, but more of the social monitoring that you can do um, with, you know, some of the things, one of my favorites is HubSpot. Um, using tools like that just to get an idea of what's coming out on a regular basis, what's being said about me, um, you know, good and bad again, and, um, you know, the, the other things to do is look at people that you can emulate, but emulate correctly. So, you know, look at competitors, look at peers, look at people that you follow that you get value from. Um, what are they doing and how can you replicate that in your own space? And, uh, you know, even looking at, you know, some of the, the top executives and, and, uh, and celebrities, but again, being real careful not to try to be a celebrity status if, if you're not. <laughs> so in, in terms of, of you know, a uh, process or steps, what would you recommend that executives follow to create a solid personal brand action plan? You, know, you have all this research, what are the steps or process should I follow to, to you now put it into an action plan that I can follow? That's a great question because um, I think a lot of people hear personal branding and, and it's a very big topic, it's a very broad topic a lot of, of, of materials and books and articles are out there on it. And so people, I think, see it and they say, okay, well, I have to do personal branding, do reputation management. They jump into social media or they up their social media activity, but there is, there's just no plan whatsoever. Um, so really, really understanding what it is that um, you're trying to get accomplished. So, you know, a process, again, we, we talk about it in, in the book, in Brand Aid, but, you know, first starting with, what you want people to think about you and, and asking a very simple question there. Um, you know, we did that purposely not to make personal branding overly complex. It's just what do you want the people in your lives in different relationships? So at work, at home, clients, prospects, etc. What do you want them to think about you um, and writing those brand items down? So just taking, you know, basically a current uh, assessment and writing it down saying this is what um, I want people to think about me. And making that a very authentic list. You know, don't don't go out there and again try to make it a celebrity type status or make you bigger than you are. Just you know, very true to yourself and a very realistic list of what is it that uh, that my brand says about me today. Um, and then look at the future. So 
as you advance in your career, as you advance in, in your life, what is it that you want your brand to be and what do you want your legacy to be? And then looking at the gap analysis essentially. So what are the things that I need to build um, specifically with social media since we're focusing on it um, and the digital assets that you have? So you know, what articles can you put out there? What videos are out there? What social media profiles can you build or which ones did you try and you don't like? Um, so doing you know, build and break plans to make sure that you're working toward that future brand, um, that's a great place to start. So, you know, something I hear uh, a great deal, and I expect you to too, is, is executives who say, you know, hey, I, I don't really need personal branding. I don't have a personal brand. It's, it's not for me. How do you respond to that? The, uh, the biggest one um, that we hear is not necessarily that I don't have a personal brand. Certainly people think that, and they, they don't outright say it. Uh, but the one thing that we hear pretty directly is, you know, something along the lines of, well, you can't find me. You know, I don't do social media. You know, you Google my name, nothing comes up. And our answer is always the same. That is your brand. You know, if, if you can't be found in today's world, um, it says you're outdated, you're old school. Um, it doesn't matter your age. It just shows that you've at some point decided I'm not going to keep up with, with the world, with the way that the world interacts. Um, we actually have a, a story about it in the intro in the book, and a guy actually came up to Larry and uh, and said that exact thing. You know, I, you know, you can't find me. And, and Larry went through and gave gave him a little bit of an education on on how that's not a great strategy. Uh, but you know, your brand certainly precedes you. It, it's it's the way of the world today, um, with you know the speed and amount of information that's out there. Your brand precedes you. One of the the best stories I I can tell you about that. Um, it's one from Larry Lenny, the, the co-author on the book. He was at his daughter's soccer game one day. And Larry, um, if you see him out, you know, he's, he's dressed like a normal guy. You know, he's in sweats and a t-shirt. And he's out there, and one of the soccer moms was standing next to Larry. And she said, so what do you do? And uh, Larry admits he just wasn't really in the mood to talk that day. So he said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher. I, I teach adults. And the lady flipped open her iPad and Googled Larry's name. And she looked at it and she said, no, you're not. You're an author, and you're this, and you know. And so, within a few minutes or a few seconds, um, his brain was very clearly communicated. And so, if she hadn't found something, it would have been a very different message. You have a, uh, I think, a great little um, question you ask, and it's like you know, you talk about you know, do you need a personal brand? And there's there's a question that you ask in the book, and it's uh, um, can't remember what it was. It's something about. If you can answer the question, insert name. What, what was that question? Yeah, if anyone can answer the question, what do you think about Steve, you have a brand. Um, and, and, you know, it's just, again, it's just about what people think about you. It's, it's not an overly complex thing. Um, there's certainly complex elements in it, but if people have a feeling about you and, you know, from the interactions and the experiences that they have with you, you have a personal brand. And so it, you can be very reactive and let people dictate it, or you can be purposeful in the way that you interact, you communicate, you present yourself offline and online, um, and there's a huge opportunity in that. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, I think, you know, one of the things, and, I, and not to be doom and gloom, I think we've hit the, um, this, this gong a few times, but I, I, I regularly come across people, friends and friends of friends who I meet who um, who who poo pooed managing the personal brand for years and uh, and now they're so far behind that they can't get work or they can't move forward and it's one of those things it's so much easier just to start spending a little bit of time right now working on it but you know a lot of folks you know you know there are a lot of executives that say you know I don't have time uh, um, to do this I'm already in a real busy life and you know so how what are your you know when someone when someone says you know I'm, I'm too busy to manage a personal brand, what kinds you know what kinds of tools or advice do you have uh, t that for them to help manage this to manage the personal brand in their current situation? Yeah, you know, just with social media um, as a general topic, taking you know personal branding out of it, it can be very overwhelming. You know, there's there's so many places that someone could be, um, and I think people look at social media and personal branding as just way too broad of a topic and they try to do everything at once and they, they look at that and say, 
I can't do everything, so I'm going to do nothing. Um, and and that's you know that's a really bad place to be. Um, the the advice up front that that I typically give people is, you know, not everyone has the skill, the time, or or even the technology, um, you know, wherewithal or ability to be a you know a top social media influencer like a Steve Farnsworth. Um, it just it takes a very special person to do that. Um, I'm certainly not one. <laughs> But you know what? What we tell people is, you know, you don't have to be out there all day, every day, managing it the way that the best of the best do. It's not realistic. You know, you, you don't have to let it consume you. You just have to be good at what you're you're trying to get accomplished. And so, to to really boil it down for them, we say, look, it, it's just like the country club mentality. You know, years ago, if you were a sales guy, a top executive. You wanted to go where the influencers were, so you went to a country club, you went to a chamber event, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and now that's done, you know, a thousand times faster, um, a thousand times easier, and more rapidly um, online. And so it's the same thing with social media. You know, go where your target, your influencers are, and interact there. You, know, you don't have to go everywhere if you're not trying to target. Um, you know, millennials. There's probably no need for you to have an Instagram account. Uh, so you know, just really, you need to pick and choose where you want to be, and you know, have a have a plan and stay consistent. You know, I think a lot of people try to. When you look at the three, you know, buckets you could go in is fast, faster, fastest. I think most people try to go fastest. Start with fast. Just go in and do something once a day, uh, maybe twice a day. You know, just whatever works for you. And again, you know, look at the people that you're trying to connect with. How often are they out there? And try to maybe mimic that so you're not over communicating but you're not under communicating. Um, and the other thing is, you know, use automation. Use HubSpot, use Hootsuite, use a lot of these free tools that can help you automate. Because I know um, you're not tweeting probably at 3 a.m. in the morning California time, but sometimes tweets go out. Um, so I think, you know, having the understanding of the platform, having an understanding of how automation can help you. Um, it, it can really get someone up and running, managing their brand, communicating effectively without spending, you know, an entire day's worth of work trying to figure out social media. I'm also a big fan of Hootsuite, and also I use Buffer a lot too, which are great tools. And uh, I pay for a professional version of Hootsuite, but uh, the free version is great, and the free version of Buffer is great too. So, in in terms of uh, consistency. How important is being consistent across uh, the places where your name shows up? And what kind? Of, when you talk about consistency, what should I, should I be looking for as an executive in, in those different places where my name shows up in those digital outposts? Yeah, the the consistency it, it's really the name of the game. Um, once you've established what it is you want to get communicated with your brand, um, that has to be consistent. You know, you can't, for example, with us. You know, we if we want people to see us as thought leaders in the marketing and, and digital and social media space, but you go to our Facebook, our Twitter, our LinkedIn profile, or wherever we are, and all we're talking about is you know triathlon or you know cool cool reading glasses, it, it's going to be there's a there's going to be a breakdown in the message that you're sending, and so you know you really need to look at it as wherever I am, I need to be you know, essentially beating that same drum across platforms. And, and the easiest way to do it is pull up your browser, open up tabs, and pull up every account that you know you have, look at the profile picture, look at the cover picture, look at the description, and then look at the posts that you're putting out there. Is this consistent with what you want, and is there a breakdown, you know, is one very professional and one 100% personal, that would be a bad thing. So just making sure that you know the true you, who exists in the world, both professionally and personally, is communicated out there. So one of the things you talk, you know, one of the things that you advise is not to use, uh, you know, not to necessarily go and mimic somebody who's top in the field. They shouldn't necessarily go to Bill Gates' Twitter profile and copy what he's doing, or you know, somebody like that. And so. Can you give a couple examples, like three uh, social profiles that you think do, you know, a mid-sized business uh, for executives that do a really nice job, kind of striking that balance of like being being uh, interesting, not being me too, and being a good place to, at least to give you a sense of, of quality. Yeah, 
I think we'd all like to be the uh, the Richard Branson, you know, sitting on Necker Island, kite surfing and doing whatever he does. Uh, probably wouldn't fly for for most of the general public. So uh, yeah, th there's a few people that that come to mind, and based on you know what they're doing, I think the 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 things that they're doing well is the consistency. They're balancing the personal and professional, um, so they're not you know stuffy corporate, but they're not all you know. Here's me at my kid's soccer game, um, and they're providing value. Um, so three that that I can think of. The first one is uh, his name's Tim Lehman. Um, he's the CEO of Gibson. It's an insurance agency out of South Bend, Indiana. Um, the reason I, I I say him from a leadership standpoint, he's one of the best I've seen from a from a mid-sized company. Um, he saw the the value in personal branding, the value in the agency, you know, insurance agency, pretty archaic industry. Um, that's what they're known for. But he saw the value in doing social media, content marketing, and he led the charge. Instead of saying, okay, you know, marketing department and Patrick, you know, you guys go do this for me and we'll hope for the best. He took charge. And so he writes a blog every single week um, that establishes thought leadership. And he's done it for, it's, it's over a year now, which is fantastic. He's done it every week. Um, he promotes it correctly, and what you're seeing is not only is the agency getting value from it because Tim's out there providing, you know, really remarkable content, but you know, visits are going up and all that other good stuff. But now, other key executives and other, you know, client-facing personnel, all of a sudden, you're seeing more people showing up on not only just having accounts on LinkedIn and Twitter, but they're they're active and they're providing value. So, from a leadership standpoint, he's fantastic. Um, Another one would be uh, Jonathan Spiro. He's the CEO of uh, in-house physicians uh, up in Illinois. And again, just a, they're more of a uh, it's a more of a progressive market, I'd say. Uh, but again, he's leading the charge and he's very authentic in what he does. He's a really smart guy. He's, he's a doctor. He's got his own company. Um, so from a value creation standpoint, he's doing a great job. And he's a guy that um, he, he is too busy to do it, so he certainly enlists our help. He does some automation stuff that, that we're providing for him, but he's putting some really great stuff out there, and you know it, it's attracting people not only to him but his company. So it's that balance of you know me ink versus we ink and all and all that stuff. You know it's really providing value for the entire organization, um, and people are attracted to that. And then the third, I, I do have to give uh, a shout out to, to my co-author, Larry Lenny. Um, he does a pretty good job on social media. Um, and, and the reason I say Larry is he's one of the busiest guys I know, um, but he still finds time to, to manage his brand. And certainly, you know, it would be, you know, a little, little wrong of him to write a book about it and we have all this stuff in the book and he doesn't do it. Um, but the thing I love about Larry is he's very open. Um, you know, he talks about he's he's got five daughters, and he highlights them, and he talks about his family. He talks about, you know, he's a big mountain biker, and so you get a feel for Larry Linney outside of you know him standing on stage giving presentations and writing books and all the stuff he does. Um, he really gives you insight into into the guy, and I think that's an important element, and I think that's something that a lot of executives miss. Uh, yeah, it's actually really a, a great point. Maybe you could talk. Can you talk? I mean, like, I think you hit a couple of the things, but uh, a lot of people really debate about how much personal stuff to share, and it's a it's a good question to be unsure about in the sense that you, you don't want to like too too much skew your brand. But you, you kind of talked about Larry kind of weaving these parts into his his existing brand identity, weaving them in. Can you talk about maybe some uh, some things that he does that seem to strike a good balance? Yeah, doing that. he, you know, he's he's done what we what we uh, what we teach in the book. So um, he's established his brand, and, and some of the things that he wants to portray um, in all of his communications are uh, discipline and family values. And so he weaves, you know, those in. And, and he's also very good um, at understanding the intricacies and the nuances of the platforms that he's on. So. You know, he does pictures on Facebook, and he, you know, retweets things on Twitter, and, um, you know, he provides value on LinkedIn. And so, you know, with discipline, um, he, you know, shows that he does these huge um, top-level mountain bike races. And so he's not out there saying, I'm a disciplined, healthy individual, but when people see that he does the Leadville, um, Leadville 100, 
um, you know, that, that's a testament. And so I think weaving those things in shows a bigger brand presence. You know, back to what I was saying early, you know, not emulating Richard Branson, but, you know, Richard Branson does a very good job of balancing the two. And I think um, if, if any, you know, mid-size to large company executive is, is, you know, watching this, that's something they can take from a celebrity status is really weaving in and letting people see because there can't be a disconnect between, you know, professional Patrick and, and personal Patrick. It really needs to be the person that you are and certainly my work life is very much involved, you know, a part of me. Uh, but I certainly do things outside of, of uh, you know, my daily job. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Steve.